Hello, my friends. Well, what have we got here? Water driver. 3,000. 1,500 PSI, 2 gallons per minute. That's a small engine. That's probably a 4 horsepower engine. Ah, 3.8. Tecumseh. With a vertical drive pump. So this looks like a lawnmower engine, but it isn't because it'll have a cast iron flywheel instead of the blade being the fly blade on the mower being the flywheel. So this belongs to a good friend of mine. His name is Dick. And uh, I think I had it I must have had this in here five or six years ago. Because that that uh, primer bulb looks like something I'd put on, right? I do not remember it specifically though. He says it's uh, he, the only way he can start it is to prime it. Like squirting gas into there. But I think these older units are well made, so we'll just start having a look at it right now. Don't go anywhere. What are you, whatever you're doing, having a coffee or driving the car. There. Let's have a little licky poo at the gas. Let's have a look at the poo poo gas. He says it hasn't run it for a couple of years. Oh, it looks good. I'm going to take it all out. Good. Okay. Now, but before, there's still some carbur. There's still some carburetor. There's still some gas in the bottom of the carburetor. So now, before we do the last of our deeds, we're going to check the oil. And it has. It's full. Perfect, people. So I'm going to try and start it just with the bunny rabbit. Oop, put a lid on that fuel. Nothing, honey. So now we're going to squirt it with some two-stroke fuel. drink. This is a Tecumseh now, remember? We should be gone. We should be going because it's not on stop. Come on, girl. Why don't you start? Maybe I flooded it. There we go. Okay, are you guys still watching this fantastic operation? Okay, now we're going to jack it up and remove said carburetor. I like Dick, he's my kind of guy. Everything's strapped in, no twists, no ties. Okay, you can see the floor is damp, but it's not wet. The old mop. Hey, I use the water from inside that hose to wash my floor. I know you guys in, in the UK have all these fancy trees with the compartments and everything, but this one's a modern idea. 
where you can put everything in one tray. He must stop! Stop! I'm going to take that carburetor off. Now I am going to show you. I got static from a viewer, but I didn't know how to come see. Um, how to come see linkages go together for the throttle. Well, I've only done three or four hundred of these. And you have to make sure, first of all, that the fuel line doesn't touch the throttle, but there. Oh yeah, this one's manual, right? Ooh. Oh, throttle, the, uh, that's interesting. The throttle is stuck in one position. So anyway. The solid bar goes to the top, and the bottom bar goes to whatever governor speed you need. There's usually only one hole on the mowers. This one has two, right there. The spring, one of the spring goes on the bottom, and the spring goes on the latch for the throttle. I think I can get this off without removing the muffler. That would be sweet. Let's go. Oh, it's kind of loose almost, eh? Beautiful as that, eh? Huh. There it is. And a clamp. This clamp's probably going to snap. Nope. And now we need said gas plier, gas line pliers. Beep, beep. And we'll just remove that from there. Not bad considering it's probably a 2001 unit. We have to remember the Tecumseh went out of business in 2008, and by then they were doing the they were doing the overhead valves. All right, my friend, come and sit up on the bench, and we'll lower you down. Get down! Get back up again. So here we are, carburetor. I'm gonna sit down. I'm just starting to do this kind of thing now. I don't like it. So we're going to need half inch, 7 sixteenths, 3 eighths, probably another drill. So far it looks so good. Okay, the, the hole in the jet is plugged. There's two holes in these, just in case you didn't know. Okay, this is the jet and retainer bolt for the bowl. There's a hole through here. And a hole down through here. And then there'll be a third hole right along the thread line here. I don't see it. It should be there though. So that's the important one right there on the side, on the side of the unit. Good. Now we should really be able to blow through there now. Oh, you can see right through that. I bet you if I put it back together now it would run. But not well because the throttle butterfly is stuck. Good. That is clean. Okay, let's take the bowl off. 
Okay, not too bad. I'm just going to let that sit with a little bit of carb cleaner in it. We'll get our pin out of here. Oh, me. I got it. Okay. Felt like the needle was stuck to the seat as well. I'm just trying to get down into the seat. Shouldn't have to replace it if it's been in good gas. I just pulled it out anyway. It's actually pretty good. Throw that in. Oh, not, not going to throw that in there. We're going to throw that into. Yay! Oh, I got a better idea. I got many different layers and parts of old fuel. Let's use his own fuel. We'll cannibalize some of his own gas. We'll throw the needle in there. We'll throw the seat in there. We'll throw the bolt in there. And we'll throw the, the float in there. Good. We're almost there, guys. Except, yes, I thought that. When we were taking it apart, look at that. That in The butterfly for the throttle is jammed shut. No matter what we do. See, that should be moving back and forth. Let's just give it a good blast. There it moved. You might see that it's still stiff, right? So now it's moving, see? I'm just going to put a drop of transmission fluid on that. Our little two-year-old two great great grand niece is here. She probably thinks, oh, Uncle Bruce is sitting in the garage talking to himself. There we go. That should help immensely with the throttle response, huh? with a rubber o-ring and then it'll fall on the floor. Hey, it didn't go underneath the bench. Let's throw that in the, in the gas too. Shouldn't hurt it. Now, the only reason why I took that off of there is so I can uh, visually see if things are clear. I'm going to shoot up the emulsion tube. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's good. I can shoot into one of these holes, and it should it should go into the uh, primer. There's dark dark black ink coming out of there, so I'm going to get some fuel into there right away. I don't want the uh, carb juice to look at that. Okay, now we got to get some clean fuel into that primer. There we go. That's good. Okay, Brewster. Let's just be proactive here. Now that we've got the good little blue blue rags again. These things rock. Yes, there's a small amount of carb cleaner in this juice. But all that dirt came from inside that carburetor. Eh? I'll just let that sit. Wipe it out. I'm going to go wash my hands. 
Then we'll just have a closer look here. All right, we're ready to put this bad boy back together again. A new bowl seal. Sometimes I don't, but it's so important on these pulse on these primers because that's a pulse of air coming out of there, and on the bowl itself, ooh, that's been on there a while. That's probably the original. On the bowl itself, you need a good seal for that air of pulse, the pulse of air coming from the primer bulb. There we go. Yeah, it was ready. So let me just bypass this little work here for a minute and we'll just do a little bit of preventative maintenance on the ridge here. That looks good. That gas looks good. Good. A new bowl seal. Now I was ordering them by the kit, they were getting harder to find, and then I found a site on uh, Amazon that ships just the seal for the bowl. And in most cases that's all you need. You gotta get it fit on just right, no wrinkles. Stella the lawnmower lady and I encountered those about the same time. I don't know if it was her idea. Put them in. We're going to put the seat in. Ridges down. Funny, it just popped out, eh? I'm going to just use a little bit of lubrication for the nation. There we go. Don't worry folks, we're going to test this. Now, the one thing I have not checked over really, really closely is this older bulb. But if it doesn't work, we can replace it when it's on the machine. They're getting rare. Okay, so we got that on, we got the seat in, now we take the float and the needle. Oh, that's a tight fit. And this goes down on top of that like that with the hinge pin for the bowl or hinge pin for the float. I don't have a script. I've got nothing written down, you guys. This is all just flying by the seat of my pants. Now, let's just get rid of this for a minute. And we'll get the tester. It was given to me by... Ken from Ken Small Engines. I can't believe he sent this to me. This is a Mighty Vac pressure tester. And you will see, if you haven't already seen 50 of them, you'll see 51 right here. Now here we go. I, I, I can't hold it perfectly for you. This has to be vertical. Okay, we're at 8 pounds. I'm going to flip this. See? And if it holds more than even six, we're... Yeah, it's holding six. Six. Seven. I'm happy with seven all day long. I'll even go down to five if I'm desperate on an old one. Good. Look at that. See, that cracked. So once again... Ken from Ken Small Engines. His nickname is Mr. Mow It All. Bowl goes where the hinge is, the notch in the bowl. Good. We cleaned the plug, we cleaned the bolt, remember that? Good. And then this, let me see, this goes on to here like that. And that goes on to here with the latch for the air filter, that on the outside. Use a Phillips screwdriver. There we go. Me 
a little bit. Okay, so those go to the throttle level levers on the uh, governor, and this is going to go back on. So we're almost there. Uh, I'm just going to check the fuel line to see how good it is. All right, here we are. There's the linkage. The solid one goes to the throttle, closest one to the pivot. Can't see that under there. And then the one with the spring goes on the bottom hole. Now this one has three holes. I've never seen that before. Okay. So this is where it all comes together right now, guy. And I did not muck with the intake manifold gasket. It might, we might have to put on a different fuel line if it's touching the gasket. That might have been the problem with it all along, eh? Just tighten that up with my uh, little tightener upper. Here we go. Good. Good. Did you hear my, that was my knuckles. Okay, let's put it on full bunny rabbit and see if we have travel on the governor. Not really, eh? But it's tight because the air cleaner is going to be on there too. So I'm going to bend that governor back a little bit. Now we'll see. We'll use the hemostat stat just to see. Oh, that's X, excellent. And then, and then on low throttle, there's not as much tension. And high throttle there is. Okay, I love it. Be right with you. Eight dirt should be about a half a tank. See, once again, a bomb went off. You use every tool in the arsenal when you're, uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Because you think, oh, I need something to pinch this or lift this or do that. And you just keep grabbing stuff until it's over. All right, let's go. I don't want to run it too much. They say, the old timers say that you can run these pumps with the engine on and it doesn't hurt them. Other guys say it hurts them. But I've definitely had no problem doing 30 second tests with them. So now we're going to take it out into the yard and see if it flies. Alright, so whenever I clean a plug on the wire brush grinder, it's not a grinder, it's got a wire brush on it. I go in here with a probe of any kind just to make sure there's no wire that came from the grinder brush to here. Uh, I did wreck an engine once doing that. Well, I scored the cylinder, so but anyway, it, it worked out. Now, I'm just going to turn it upside down to see if it's a girl or a boy. And this one does have oil in it, eh? I've run it a little bit. I'm very, very tempted to change the oil in the pump right now. I'm gonna. Okay, I like to use these low pressure disconnects when I'm working on pumps. It just makes it this much easier because sometimes you could unplug them and plug them in many, many times and you just have to do this. You hear that beautifulness? Now we'll run some water through the hose. not going through. That was my fear. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the trigger clamped open down here and I've got no airflow. You see that? You can hear it. I should be getting through the nozzle with the valve open. So, I'm going to try and take it apart. I suspect 
that the plug is probably in here or it's not it's me doing something wrong so this just does a flapper like high pressure low pressure high pressure low pressure right so I'm going to take it apart midway and see if we can uh, find anything all right now we're going to turn the air on again stay Hey, and you guys are looking right here, eh? And here. Okay, look at that. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Now, so it's plugged in this end right here. can blow the other way through. It only takes a step. I can see through it now. Now we should be able, with that clamped, we should be able to uh, squirt through to the end down here now, right? Now there's no more water in the hose, but there is travel, there's, there's moisture coming out. So let's go out front and hook her up again. Okay, this is the big kahuna. Plug this in. Take our clamp off. I love it when you hug me, you know. Uncle's working on some stuff. Uncle's working. He's fixing that. Did you show her the fixing room? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. We got her done. I changed the oil in both the pump and the engine. I used non-detergent 30 weight oil in the pump. And, uh, and actually I ended up using synthetic in the, uh, in the engine. Go Bruce. Plus, she'd be so proud of me. So I just connected the, uh, the high pressure side. Now I'm connecting the low pressure side. And we're going to start her up. So that's perfect. I don't think I can carry all this back together. Maybe. Anyway, we'll see you later.